Boom. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Mount MoGraph. As always, my name's Matt, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a kind of cool transition, uh, or like a Luma Mat or Alpha Mat or... I don't know, in this case, an endless loop. So let's jump on in, create a new composition here and call it something like base comp. I'm gonna go with 1600 by 1200 as my width and height or four by three. So next, all we have to do is draw any kind of object on the screen uh, and use it to animate some kind of path we like. So I'm gonna move this up to the top left here, set a keyframe and pull it forward to actually a second. I always like to leave a little bit of time from the initial start of the animation to where you're actually starting to do work, uh, just cause I feel like it's a safer bet if you ever do need to adjust the time back here. Uh, so I'm gonna go forward in time and also set a keyframe over on the bottom right over here and press G on my keyboard for the pen tool and kind of pull out some Bezier handles to get a more interesting path of animation. So I'm gonna preview this on my timeline and that's already looking pretty decent. Um, I think the one thing we're gonna to wanna to do is maybe add a little bit more of a severe curve here, uh, just pressing G and adding a little, another point on this timeline. And it's gonna be still the even motion, you're just affecting the path. So uh, that velocity is gonna stay the same. And I guess at the end it would be kind of sweet to almost pop up. So we'll do a little bit more adjustment. Uh, and this is going to be the path that we kind of cut through um, with using the tracer effect. So I'm going to go and select shape layer one and just name this to something. Uh, I guess I'll literally call it something. Uh, just important to name it, even though that was probably useless. And the next step we're going to do is using a tool in Midas called Tracer Trace, um, or you can use this effect here called Write On, um, just in After Effects. Uh, Tracer is just kind of like going to uh, automate a lot of what you would have to do, um, but you can also use this effect and get the same result. So I'm just going to select the layer here and go down to Trace and make a system name, and we're going to call this maybe like our Trace effect and press enter. So now I have a trace effect comp added here and if we preview our timeline, you're gonna see we now have a little tracer line that gets uh, kind of created behind our animations path. So that looks nice. I'm gonna go ahead and hide my something and use the breadcrumbs in the composition panel to go into the trace effect and press E on my keyboard, hold command, click the arrow to see the tracer effect and all the options. And what we're gonna do is go down into our velocity here and kind of get a Tinkerbell effect to start. So if you turn this value up to maybe like 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, some kind of effect, you're gonna see we now have a Tinkerbell look, um, which is always fun to play around with. So if you go down into the animation property here and just check out some of the different options like fire, you're gonna see that this uh, kind of tracer effect is a great start to a bunch of kind of cool effects. And I'm sure there's gonna be more stuff about that soon uh, coming to this channel, wink, wink. Uh, so here we go. That's a vortex effect that's not gonna work. And I think this twirly effect that we just landed on uh, is gonna be perfect. I think it's just a little bit more motion than the Tinkerbell one or the direction one or whatever it started with and I think this is gonna work pretty well for us. So the next thing we're gonna do is set a keyframe on our gravity and a keyframe on our blob death size. Press U on your keyboard to see your active keyframes and again, set your keyframe somewhere around that one second mark. Uh, go forward in time and kind of play around with this gravity. If you turn it up, you're kind of saying uh, for this like animation kind of thing, the tracer to have like almost secondary motion using gravity. So that's kind of nice. I'm gonna turn the gravity actually down more to start. So it's gonna have like uh, yeah, this kind of cool little organic motion and maybe at the end here I'm actually going to turn the gravity back down um, To kind of get more more of a little path there. So let's see if that's looking cool um, Yeah, I think that's gonna work pretty well So just word around where the end of that timeline is you're gonna turn up your blob death size um, Until your screen turns completely white or whatever color you're using as a luma mat uh, Just to get things nice and smoothed out here and maybe go forward a touch in time or move it back. I don't know. So just wait, wait a second for it to preview. And as soon as the screen turns all one color, you're going to just trim the layer you're on, uh, go into the rectangle tool, double click the icon, and then just trim the front of that layer. Uh, and as you can see, it like instantly previews in After Effects because now After Effects knows you don't want to render any more of this uh, tracer effect. Uh, that would be silly. So let's go ahead and go to the beginning of the timeline and just preview it and make sure that this motion is looking kind of sweet. Um, I think it's looking cool so far and it doesn't really matter how dirty these lines are like on the outside here because we're actually going to add a little bit more kind of distortion or turbulence literally to the outside to get that kind of cool inky look um, that I think is pretty sweet. So just one more second here and then we can actually go through a cool trick using a proxy once you have a fully rendered like RAM previewed timeline kind of thing. 
as long as your settings are the same. So just one more second here and just make sure that we're filling up our whole screen with whatever color you chose to use. And then we can go to the other cool stuff. And yeah, it's just kind of funny what you can do with like totally linear keyframes. So there we go, we've got our timeline previewed. Uh, one more time, you wanna just go through and just check that this motion is kind of what you want. And I think that looks really nice and kind of natural. So we're gonna go over to our project and whatever comp you're currently in, so in my case, the trace effect, the name I chose, I'm gonna right click and go down to create proxy, select movie and change my settings to be current settings, I guess. Uh, actually, yeah, current settings, I guess we'll say yeah, we'll just say current settings is cool. We're gonna go into custom QuickTime or whatever if you're on Windows, the equivalent, and just make sure your post render action is to set proxy. Um, and also an RGB with an alpha would be a kind of sweet choice. So let's render it. And as you can see, it's gonna render really quick because it can use the RAM preview from our timeline because we didn't do any changes. So if I click up the breadcrumb back into the base comp using my, my Harry Potter wizard mode of uh, clicking through locks uh, with the breadcrumbs, you're going to see that now I can scrub the timeline and get a real-time playback of that animation we had. So I really don't need to worry about my something keyframes anymore, so I may as well shy the layer here and just focus on this wonderful composition that we have created. So the next thing I want to do is create a new adjustment layer and just name it something like a Turby is going to be great. We're going to click into our effects and presets and grab the most used and most awesome effect, Turbulent Displace, drop it onto our Turby layer, go down into the vertical displacement uh, mode, and we're going to play around with these settings until we have a kind of cool look um, that we're after. So this is all going to be personal preference. I think like this one is kind of... I don't know, whatever whatever that one is, and this one can be whatever this one is. So uh, that was a really nice explanation, I'm sure. And we're going to turn up our complexity until we start to get this kind of cool, like, ripply line action thing. Uh, once you have a good ripply line action thing, uh, we're going to do a little bit more animation um, just on the evolution. So press U on your keyboard on the evolution, uh, just and then press U on your keyboard. Or Yeah, I already said that, just so you can see your, your key. Um, so we're not going to do anything more with this at the moment, but we're going to duplicate our trace effect and actually just name this like trace2, or actually we'll call this uh, trace invert or invert because I missed typing. So in your effects and presets, we're going to grab the invert effect, drop it onto that layer, and you're gonna see it all looks messed up for a second. But if you drag it back in time, this composition, since it's a rendered proxy, uh, we're gonna be able to like scrub uh, scrub the timeline with our composition and just see uh, about lining up this animation. So if I go forward in time here, uh, whenever you're feeling like you wanna bring in the other layer, you just slide back that comp. And since it's an inverted color, um, you're gonna see it kind of shows up on the screen. But what's not cool is it's coming from the same size. So we're gonna to go to our scale and just uh, flip this first property after you unlock it. And now it should be coming out from the other side here. So we'll actually scrub this back a little bit more in time and just see how this is looking. It might not look wonderful um, yet, but uh, yeah, with a little bit of tweaking or playing around, you can always get this stuff to look kind of cool. Um, I spent like probably a little bit more time on this one uh, than this current one. But yeah, I'll actually make this project file available too. Um, you can download in the description, I guess, uh, if, you're, if you want it. Uh, so yeah, maybe I'll go actually with some kind of smaller look here. Um, yeah, so that's kind of cool. That's the effect. And then we're gonna duplicate this first trace effect layer maybe you call it trace layer of two. And we're going to do the same thing where we just line it up um, once it has like filled up the screen. So there's that layer coming through. There's a black layer coming through. And then, yeah, I mean, if you like that look, uh, we're going to roll with it. So the nice other thing you can do is do command R on your keyboard and just pull out a little marker here. And we're going to go back in time until we're just about at the same kind of uh, moment and set the work area there. I forgot to set it over here. So make sure you do that. And that's just going to be kind of like our endless loop section. Um, and once you have your endless loop section, just set a keyframe at the beginning of it, copy it, paste it at the end, and just in the middle, turn up your evolution amount. So we're having some kind of like movement and it also looks like a perfect loop. Um, yeah. So then once you have that, uh, you're good to go. And you have uh, this cool uh, composition luma mat thing that you can use for something. Uh, so anyway, this was Matt from Mount Bograph. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you later. Peace.